Good morning, guys. It is day number two here at the Chantilly Car Show. I know the background's a little bit different, but I'm knocking out a quick 10 mile run this morning. Now, two things. Number one, I did go to the show yesterday. I spent about three hours on the floor, but I didn't record any footage. The only reason why is one, I didn't want to record. I just wanted to have a little bit of a break, but also number two, I was hanging out with another pre-work collector my age, who's also a data scientist. So kind of hard to find in the hobby, someone with the same exact career and also collects pre-war cards in their early twenties. With that being said, I'm going to finish this run. I'll go back to my hotel and I'll show you guys what I picked up. All right, cards are here, let's take a look at them. All right, so first we have a 1969 Bob Gibson and a little OC left to right, but these tend to be pretty bad and uh, look pretty good for the price. Up next, 1948 Bowman. We got a Johnny Mines, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so a little bit of staining here on the back. Uh, front presents pretty well, but for like 20 bucks plus a little bit of a discount, you can't pass that up. Then we have two Hall of Famers from 1933 Gaudi, Munich and Cronin. Now they're cheaper Hall of Famers within the set, but again, like 40 bucks sticker, a little bit less. For Hall of Famers in a classic set, which a lot of people like, kind of like the T206, so I'll collect the Hall of Famer to get it, and pretty cool imagery, yeah. Then we have Rick Farrell over here at 1936 Gaudi, another black and white card, which I'm not a huge fan of those, but it did look pretty nice overall. So maybe this will be in a grade stack. I'm gonna look at these two and determine um, whether I'm gonna end up grading some stuff or comp seeing it or what I end up doing or just selling it roll. And then we picked up three um, Indian gums. So we have Yellowstone Kelly. I thought this looked pretty decent. Maybe not the best overall, like a two, two and a half, but I do like the designs on these. We got Sitting Bull and then we got Kit Carson. So I, the Kit Carson was actually the nicest and wasn't in the display case to be honest with you, a little bit of staining, um, but really, really good looking card, at least on this side of things. So, I mean, this is just from two bargain bins. There's stuff I saw at some of the dealers I usually buy from. I don't think I've bought from these dealers before for either of these, so it's kind of cool with that. And I'm gonna go check through those today and we'll vlog if I do have time through those type of bins, but a lot I gotta do. It's, uh, I think around like 8.30ish, so the show starts at nine. So I'm gonna grab some Chick-fil-A real quick. Then we're gonna head over to the show and start buying some vintage cards. I'm running a little bit late this morning, grab breakfast, but um, I was working on a deal for some 1915 Susini cards. Now some of you guys might know the Trish Speaker and also the Jack Johnson, but the set features over 1300 cards in general. So I'm trying to buy the Winston Churchill as well as the Thomas Edison. I do have a lead on that this morning. I did pick up the George Washington and also the General Grant, um, but hopefully we do close this at the show. Although the deal isn't happening at the show, I'll still show you the cards. 130. Awesome. Easy. <laughs> Always buy your one or two vintage cards every time. It's but it works out. It's easy. And I'll get your pay though. We, we actually got in. We graded like, uh, I feel like it was the best one, but we graded probably like 18 or 19 52s. And that's the best one we've got. Make that make sense. That's a good looking 3.5 too. It's not bad. Nice. All right, there's a few things I'm sure. thinking about. Can okay. I take a look first at your 52 Maze reprint? Yep. I think those are 2012, but like, now there's other versions. Boom, correct, 2012 on that one. Okay, then can I take a look at your Ricky 8? Then you're a Terry Bradshaw four. And that's all your vintage, right? There's nothing else. Uh, yeah, no, just my sats and then commons. Okay. What's going on? What's up, man? Yeah. What's up? How you doing? Good. So I ended up getting this lot. Where do you think you would be out around? I'd do like 390. I would, I would do 360. But I'm like, I'd, um, so I'm paying the fee on that side of things. I have a pay all goods and service too. No, 
I mean, I'm paying the fee. Yeah. It's 10 bucks. That yeah, way 10.50, right? Yeah. I thought I said 10.50, so. Yeah. Okay, 50. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. All right, a few people asked me for this Washington before, so we just picked this one up. 100. Alex always has so much good stuff at his booth. Always have to buy something. So these right here were 15 each. These were 20 each. So 195. And then these were prices marked. Uh, 220, 260, 315. You'd probably say 250. Let's do that. I was thinking around over there too. No stangle though. Obviously Joe Jackson's in there and that's what 500 right now? Or close to a million? I saw that one national before, but kind of a good look. That car, I mean, there was a time that car wasn't that big of a deal. I mean it's like I know a guy that's just passed away in the past. I think it's been since the national. He bought it for Roy Nathan Virginia show at the Marco Rose to have uh, downstairs to the convention center. Yeah. He bought it from Rand Bailey. It's like 1990, early at Schneider. He paid him $2,500. Still, though, that's a lot of money for back then, card wise. No, yeah, it it's raw. It's still raw. Yeah. I mean, but the best I can recollect is probably range but hell my god one that's a great ROI on that one yeah, I mean I don't I don't even know what the mantles were doing in the 90s but I'd assume that's a higher return oh yeah absolutely 33 and what was the total on that one or the 39 39 let's do it I appreciate it like yeah. always oh wow yep so we'll put all the raw in one area I gotta organize what stuff I'm dropping off at Comsi what stuff I'm getting graded and stuff like that so I guess stuff you'll like better is probably the raw I can uh, I always struggle with getting one card off all right so here's the raw stuff I don't think so hey great to meet you It's a polar bear. Oh, the bluegrass series too. So I don't know a ton about them. There's seven. There's, like, yeah, there's seven series, series, but that has the Casey Stengel in it. Oh, really? Stengel and Joe, and Joe Jackson. Those are the oh, two Jackson's in a different series, but yeah, he's in that set. The uh, San Usual sold at the Philly show for twelve hundred dollars. Like, damn it, I would have bought that. The color's not bad. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this spawn yet or sell this one, but that's a good one also. I mean, it's tougher to find than his forty-eight. So, look how young he looks. What? Look how young he looks. I know. And look how old like some of his sixty cards. Like when he's like he played for late a long 30. time. He did. Yeah. Those are nice. Yeah. So and then. I just bought a bunch of slabs. I mean, I wanted to give a shot, like the low price slabs. Some of those are more expensive. I got to filter them, but. Smoky Joe. All right, so I'm going to drop these off at the Com C booth instead of bringing this all back on the plane, so.
50 on the dot. Sweet. And just log in and do the form of it. So I regret already dropping off my Com C because I just picked up another cheap bulk lot. So we have eight here, about $15 a slab. Most of them sell anywhere between 20 and 25, but I'll drop it off another day. And um, it's kind of funny. I haven't really been showcase shopping too much at the show. It's been more of like bargain bins, but it's been a lot of fun. More bargain bin fun. Jordan retail foil board. These are actually kind of tough to get, which don't really buy modern, but Jordan side of things. Jimmy Fox dual tribute. Roger Maris tribute fat, and then just throw in a Carlton Fisk on that side of things. So Steven actually picked up a card today at the show. I know he's not here right now, but Hilton Smith, he's a Negro Leaguer. He's also a Hall of Famer. This isn't a Tolteros set. Now, this was a multi-year release. Some of you guys might know the Josh Gibson. Now, this does, definitely does not command the Josh Gibson price, but I think he ended up paying about $3,400 for this example. It is a BVG3. You guys can see the back on here as well. Just something you won't see that often, and this was the only example in the room and probably the only example I'll see in a few years at card shows. With that being said, he picked it up from Ashish. You guys might know some of his display cases at card shows. Larry pretty much has everything. So he actually also just started a Twitter account recently. So if you guys want to follow him, his Twitter link is right over there. All right, and our last deal of the day was with Howard over here and picked up, I think about 36 top scoops. So they range, most the most of them around here are gonna be sixes. There's a few six fives, a few sevens, and then one or two fours. Um, but this will all be going to Com C. Now, they are closed for today, so I'll be bringing them back home, but I'll be dropping it off at a future card show. But if you are trying to build the set registry, let me know because I'll work it out to deal with you on one of these. It's an awesome show and enjoy going to it when I have the opportunity to do so. So either next is gonna be Dallas or Philly. I know Dallas is two weeks away, but I haven't booked my flight yet, but I still technically want to go there because I don't have any other shows booked for November. Hope you guys did enjoy this vlog. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.